This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program here in America that you, the viewer, can express your opinions on the child welfare system and the family court system. I'm Dennis Lawrence, and beside me is Maria Millen. Maria? Well, Dennis, we're entering our fifth year now. It's hard to believe that that much time has gone by already. Um, yes, it is. I was thinking that maybe we could take a look back to what got you involved in what we're doing here and the television show and what made you think there was a reason to start something like this to educate people? Well, Maria, I had a couple grandchildren that uh, we had tried to uh, adopt. And as a grandparent, I seen that we didn't have a voice for our grandchildren. And I seen that we didn't uh, have uh, any footing in the court system really to speak of for our grandchildren. And um, as I got involved, I've seen parents that were given the so-called shaft in the family court system to lose their children without proper representation in court and um, the lies and the corruption in the system. And um, I kind of liked, uh, you know, I, I actually wrote down a few questions that I wanted to emphasize on this program before we show a video of the last days, the last day when they came to get my grandchildren. So Dennis, your granddaughter's names were Fantasia and Sabrina. Um, it's my understanding that they were in three different foster homes um, until you and your wife were actually able to become their foster parents through the legal route. Um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what happened and what you had to do, how many hoops you had to jump through to be able to gain that right to raise them? Well, Maria, uh, they were in three different foster homes during that first year, and actually when they f went to the first foster home, uh, about 24 or 48 hours after they were taken by CPS, uh, my wife had gone to the court to request that the children have be put in our care, and they came up with a thing that she was on the registry uh, for abuse and neglect. Well, the fact was uh, she had taught school and she ran her name. And in fact, we ran her name uh, up in 2007 and she had been cleared. But um, so, so they didn't want to give us the children. And we, I really kept on them about this. Uh, finally, about six, well, about nine months into the ordeal, we ran across a Brian from Bethany Christian Services who happened to have been the supervisor at the time. And I explained what was going on with Brian, and he said, well, there's, you should be able to see those children at least uh, once a month. And he also said that uh, since you have requested to take them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see that you get those children. So. Uh, it took about three months after that, and we did get the children. Um, in January of uh, 2008. Now these children came to us, and when we got them, they had been in three different foster homes. Uh, the oldest one, who was about two years old, uh, was pulling her hair out, cutting herself, screaming all night. She was not adjusting at all and moving from foster home to foster home. Uh, she was used to us, but uh, we had co we, we got them, and they looked like a couple of rag dolls. They were dirty. They hadn't had their shots. We're not up to date. Um, no information from the past year had really been, you know, 
passed along to any of these foster families and, and the foster lady told us out of all the children she's had she has hardly any information on them so during that first year uh, we had to work with the oldest one Fantasia for quite some time you know um, she was having nightmares and screaming she was cutting herself and, and we really worked with her uh, putting you know emphasizing love and security into the home and uh, really these two children about July I noticed a change uh, that they were uh, like little angels they weren't normal kids <laughs> yeah. um, I never had any kids that were so good they, they just were so helpful and good around the house and you know they love grappling grandma and about July we started putting in for the adoption of the children so you had the children and got them settled down and um you know, Dennis and I, he's my producer, but we're also friends, so we talk about this stuff. I know um, some a lot of his story and what he's been through, but you got these children in a secure, loving environment where they were blossoming, and they were really doing well behaviorally, emotionally, and psychologically. Um, now, it's my understanding that at that point, they decided to change placement of the children and your wife went to the hearing, um, a, review, a foster parent review hearing, and can you tell us a little bit about what took place at well, that hearing? Well, um, basically they wanted to remove them. I should explain that first. They, they wanted to remove them. Uh, they, they brought up my wife being on the registry again, and um, there had been a fracas upstairs, the Casa lady, um, we, I had to call the police uh, because there was a upstairs apartment where there was a big fight and I called the police. So they used that against us and then they used the fact that the next door neighbor was a sex offender who we never even spoke to. But we got to the foster care review board and this is one thing I want to emphasize how unfair the system is. This was held at Bethany Christian Services and on this board was foster woman that worked for Bethany Christian Services to decide our fate. Um, now, I got the transcripts to that, and it's not like the court transcript where everything is written down and uh, that was said and like that. It was kind of what these people thought was said because um, there was a, some, some misleading evidence in there and like that. Uh, but I remember uh, one of the things that was said, they, they had moved the children up to a couple in Kalkaska, Michigan, um, and removed them six weeks later due to a sexual allegation in that foster home. And, but I remember when, when they said, oh, these, these people that we're going to move, that we moved these children to, that we want to move these children to, well, they're just, uh, they want to adopt these children. Well, they never met met these children so why would they want to all of a sudden adopt these children and their all their hands went up and crossed their face and oh, oh my you know and that really stuck out you know people that never met these children wanted to adopt them and everybody's so happy while well, we wanted as grandparents to adopt these children because we loved them and they loved they loved us so you know it's really how, how do you think that was going to go with you know people being paid by Bethany Christian Services to foster children, you know, what what way were they going to um, rule? <laughs> so it was it was a joke. It was a circus. It was something to pacify. Yes, you can have a review board hearing and you know to pacify you. I just wanted to point out too, Dennis, that you know while this is taking place, these kids were incredibly bonded, as you'll see in the video to Dennis and his wife. Um, it was not a situation to where they didn't have a bond, so they kind of could be placed, you know, anywhere. It was definitely they had lived there, they had been there, they knew who they were with all their lives, and this was a situation in which they were incredibly bonded to their grandparents. You were later denied the adoption, and you had an appeal at Bethany Christian Services. We know how that went. Um, 
Was there any word from this man that had previously supported your wife and you when you initially had taken the girls? Well, unfortunately, Brian, during this course, <laughs> was no longer the supervisor there. Um, they had changed supervisor, and, and I remember when she came out, she used to work for CPS, and she um, looked like a lady that used to work for CPS. So she was very, um, <laughs> you know, very, very rough going. She was used to taking kids out of families. You could tell by the way she talked, and uh, she wouldn't shed a tear. Um, but we did go in front of the, um, at, when we were denied adoption, we went in front of the board at Bethany Christian Services, and the, uh, the guy that did our adoption, he was there, there was a couple other people that were there, and then there was, was a supervisor that was there from Bethany Christian Services, another one. Um, I think he was told to deny us. Um, he seemed like a pretty reasonable guy. He seemed like he was kind of for us. But I, um, a, as we sat there, and, and this is another point I want to make, as we sat there across from me, and I learned this through social media later on, but across from me, the supervisor from Bethany on adoption was the uncle of the woman and, and the couple that adopted our granddaughters. So in point in case, you can see where that was going to go. Um, and I've learned additional things since then. Um, of course, he's, uh, he's referred to as uh, the one that gets the kids for the family. And, um, and you know, I mean, it's just a... It's just a crooked system where, you know, it wouldn't have mattered what we had said or, you know, he, there was very little footing in court to go and redo something. I've known grandparents that have spent fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 grandparents that have taken things to the Supreme Court. You have no rights. You have no footing for your grandchildren in the state of Michigan. And this has got to change. We need to be able to get these things into court in front of a judge, an impartial judge, to at least have the chance to do that. So um, without further ado, i like to go to that video. Um, the day before Halloween, 2008. Yeah, we had plans at Halloween for those kids. They never did get to wear those costumes that I picked up for them, but someday they're going to know exactly how much we cared and what we went through to try to get them. And that's, that's the reason why I'm here. That's the reason why I present people's stories. So it gets out. So those kids that you're missing can see what you've gone through to try to keep your children and grandchildren. Let's go to that video. Mother's rights were completely terminated mm -hmm. in May 29th of just this year. Their rights were terminated. I get there, Eric, and he said that as long as all the paperwork and stuff got in, he would be able to have it in front of the judge by December. So, okay. and that's what we said. We're just two months away. Mm, from adopting the girls yes. herself. Well, We've had those <coughs> since long before that law came into effect. Your property. Right, and and your house. Permission. It's Let final for you. Let me see your teeth. Oh, we've got to brush your teeth. Sabrina. Brush your teeth this morning. Sabrina. Yes. There's your teeth. Sabrina. What? I love you. There's your teeth. I'm their grandmother. But they call me mom. Because they were in three or four other foster homes before they finally came to live with us. Why? Mm -hmm. And no one could handle them. Mm -hmm. And they even, we were told that we were the longest placement that they've ever been in. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. When we got the girls, Fantasia was so withdrawn inside herself. She had anger issues, and she would hurt herself, mm -hmm. and just hurt other people. And she's come so far because I've worked with her. I've gotten her help. And is this Fantasia? This is Fantasia. Hi, Fantasia. So she has a big trust issue with mm -hmm. people, and we're just afraid that now they're, they're not even going to trust us because they're going to think that we betrayed them. And that's why when Bethany Christian asked me to bring the girls there, I said, I can't do that and be remembered as the bad person that dropped them off, turned her back, and walked away. So what time is Bethany Christian Boy. Services said that they were coming? 10 and 11. No, it's 10 and 11. It's 5 minutes to 11. Here. Hmm. It'd be nice if they changed their mind, but I don't know yeah. such luck. Oh, no, I said, I just find it unfair that they're allowed to appeal the decision that it went their, our way. Uh -huh. But because it went their way, we're not allowed to appeal. It starts the custody of the girls. Right. right. They said it just goes. Grandma, do you work? No, I don't. So you have time to stay home and take yes, care of Yes, I um, was helping in my son's pizza restaurant. And I left that back in April because I realized that the girls needed me full time. Because Fantasia was just having ongoing problems. I didn't, wasn't really getting any services from them, so I stayed home to get the services and things myself and really work with them one on one. They weren't here, they didn't sit up night after night with her night terrors that she was having and the fit throwing and the ripping her hair out and things. They didn't see any of that. I handed them a baggie full of her hair one day and they said, what is this? What do you want us to do with it? <coughs> Get me some help. But they wouldn't. I pushed for the help. Because they weren't willing. And I just have a feeling that they're going to get caught up in the system. And we're going to have a regression here on her. At the hearing, yes. They did remark and say what a wonderful job I had done and all the progress that I've made with them. My name is Alicia. And I love my nieces. They're like sisters to me. And it's wrong that this is happening. I'm trying to stay strong for my mom because. It's tearing her apart. And it's tearing me apart too. Yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> Who's this little one? Are you a little one? No. Yes, and Sissy's going to take care of you. Okay? That's just in the fault. Yeah? Yeah. Are you going to take care of Sissy for me? Can you take care of Sissy? Fantasia. Will you take care of Sissy for me? Huh? Yep. Take care of each other. Give lots of hugs. Huh? Can you give each other lots of... <laughs> I'm going to miss your hugs, huh? Once a month and do a home visit. I think in the year that we've had the girls... I want to say she's only been out with the baby three times, three, four times. She'd always call me on the phone and ask me the girls to schedule and stuff to do her own business. Or she would wait until I came up there for visitation because the girls were granted visitation with her biological mom until her rights were terminated. And that's when she would do the home visit. Well, that's not a home visit. That's an office visit. That's not a home visit. Uh, it's called kinship care. Okay. We've had them since January. They were placed with us. Mm -hmm. And when did you file to adopt them? Uh, we just started the paperwork after the... Uh, our adoption workers started coming out the end of September. We don't have a lot of money, but money can't buy love. It, you know, we love these kids.
loved us so much, and so does Papa. Papa would be here if he could. He would. And I know he's having a hard time at work. One day, maybe I can share this with my granddaughters, and they can see how much that we love them and didn't want them to go. You want to take your blankie in the car with you? Whatever, the blanket's going to stay with her. I gave it to her when she was born, and it's made it through all three fossil, four fossil screens. Here, buddy. Bye, 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 bye. looking for, honey. Puppy's not in there. If you bring her over here, I can put it on her in your arms, Gloria. You're going to help out your sister? Here she comes. Let's do it together. Come on. Up here. Yeah, it's cold out there. I can't even see the bed right now. What happened to your zipper? Did you break that at school? <coughs> Did you break that at school? There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. For that nasty. <laughs> Can I go for a ride in the car? Come on. Here she takes her.
walk out. Or... Okay, come on. Here we go. You got your baby. I didn't know that loving your kids was such a crime. Well, I just wanted to say that there's a lot of things that definitely sound like a conflict of interest in this case. And, you know, we have laws set up that are supposed to be in place to protect parents. And, you know, Dennis, you're aware of this, but the general public may not be. They are working on passing a law that will give parents and grandparents a right to fight for their rights even after um, they've been terminated. So this is something that is going to give hope to a lot of parents who don't oh, have definitely. any hope right now. Definitely. So that's, that's, it's, a, it's a step in the right direction. And that's what we need. We need something in the step of the, in the, step of the right direction to undo these crimes against the family. I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching this week. Please join us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your voice can make the difference. difference.